Director Comey, I want to thank you. You are now a private citizen, and you are enduring a Senate Intelligence <laughs> Committee hearing. Um, and each of us gets seven minutes instead of five, as yesterday, to ask you questions. So thank you now, for I'm, wanting I'm to I'm between speak opportunities truth. now, well, so. Well, you're, you, you are. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have future opportunities. You know, you and I are both um, former prosecutors. I'm not going to require you to answer. I just want to make a statement that um, in, in my, um, my uh, experience of prosecuting uh, cases, uh, when a robber held a gun to somebody's head and, and said, I hope you will give me your wallet, the word hope was not the most operative word at that moment. But I'll, you don't have to respond to that point. Um, I have a series of questions to ask you. and. Um, and they're going to start with, are you aware of any meetings between the Trump administration officials and Russian officials during the campaign that have not been acknowledged by those officials in the White House? That's not a, even if I remember, clearly that's not a question I can answer in an open setting. Are you aware of any efforts by Trump campaign officials or associates of the campaign to hide their communications with Russian officials through encrypted communications or other means? I have to give you the same answer, Senator. Sure. In the course of the FBI's investigation, did you ever come across anything that suggested that communications records, documents, or other evidence had been destroyed? I think I've got to give you the same answer because it, it would touch on investigative matters. And are you aware of any efforts or potential efforts to conceal communications between campaign officials and Russian officials? I think I have to give you the same answer, Senator. Thank you. Um, as a former Attorney General, I have a series of questions about um, your connection with the Attorney General during the course of your um, tenure as, as Director. What is your understanding of the parameters of um, General Sessions' recusal from the Russia investigation? I think it's described in a written um, release or statement from DOJ, which I don't remember sitting here, but the gist was he would be recused from all matters relating to uh, Russia and the, and the campaign or activities of Russia and the 16 election, I think, something like that. Is, so is your knowledge of the extent of his recusal based on the public statements he's made? Or Correct. The, okay. So was there any kind of memorandum issued from the Attorney General or the Department of Justice to the FBI outlining the parameters of his recusal? Not that I'm aware of. And um, do you know if he reviewed any FBI or DOJ documents pertaining to the investigation before he was recused? I don't. I don't know. And after he was recused? I'm assuming it's the same answer. Same answer. And as a, aside from any notice or memorandum that was not sent or was, what mechanism or processes were in place to ensure that the Attorney General would not have any connection with the investigation, to your knowledge? I don't know for sure. I know that he had consulted with career ethics officials that know how to run a recusal at DOJ, but I don't know what mechanism they set up. And the Attorney General uh, recused himself from the investigation, but do you believe it was appropriate for him to be involved in the firing of the um, chief investigator of that case, of that Russia interference? That's something I can't answer sitting here. It's a, it's a reasonable question, but that would depend on a lot of things I don't know. Like, what did he know? What was he told? Did he realize that the president was doing it because of the Russia investigation? Things like that. I just don't know the answer. You've mentioned um, in your written testimony in here that the president essentially asked you for a loyalty pledge. Are you aware of him making the same request of any other members of the cabinet? I am not. Do you know one way or another what he... I don't know one way or another. I've never heard anything about it. And um, you mentioned that on, uh, you had the conversation where he hoped that you would let the Flynn matter go on February 14th uh, or thereabouts. It's my understanding that uh, Mr. Sessions was recused from any involvement in the investigation about a full two weeks later. To your knowledge, was the Attorney General, um, did he have access to information about the investigation in those interim two weeks? I, I don't, I, in theory, sure, because he's the Attorney General, I don't know whether he had any contact with any materials related to that. To your knowledge, was there any directive that he should not have any contact with any information about the Russian investigation between the February 14th date and the day he was ultimately recused or recused himself on March 2nd? Not to my knowledge. I don't know one way or another. And did you speak to the Attorney General about the Russia investigation before his recusal? I don't think so, no. Do you know if anyone in the department, in the FBI, um, I'd, forwarded any documents or information or memos of any sort uh, to the attention of the Attorney General before his recusal? I don't, 
I don't know of any or remember any sitting here. It's possible, but I, I don't remember any. Do you know if the Attorney General was involved, in fact involved, in any aspect of the Russia investigation after his recusal on the uh, 2nd of March? I don't. I would assume not, but I don't, I don't, well, let me say it this way. I don't know of any information that would lead me to believe he did something to touch the Russia investigation after the recusal. In your written testimony, you indicate that uh, you, uh, when you, after you were left alone with the President, you mentioned that it was inappropriate and should not, never happen again to the Attorney General. And apparently, he did not reply, and you write that he did not reply. What did he do, if anything? Did he just look at you? Was there a pause for a moment? What happened? I, I don't remember real clearly. I, I have a recollection of him just kind of looking at me, and there's a danger here I'm projecting onto him, so this may be a faulty memory, but I kind of got his body language gave me the sense like, what am I going to do? Did he shrug? I, I don't remember clearly. I think the reason I have that impression is I have some recollection of almost imperceptible, like, what am I going to do? But I, I don't have a clear recollection of that. He didn't say anything. And on that same February 14th meeting, um, you said you understood the president to be requesting that you drop the investigation. After that meeting, however, you received two calls from the president, March 30th and April 11th where the president talked about a cloud over his presidency. Has anything you've learned in the months since your February 14th meeting changed your understanding of the president's request? I guess it would be what he has said pub in public documents or public interviews? Correct. Okay. And is there anything um, about this investigation that you believe is um, in any way uh, biased or is, is, is not being informed by a, a process of seeking the truth? No. The, the appointment of a special counsel should offer great, especially given who that person is, great comfort to Americans, no matter what your political uh, affiliation is, that this will be done independently, competently, and honestly. And do you believe that he should have full authority, Mr. Mueller, um, to be able to pursue that investigation? Yes. And, I, and knowing him well uh, over the years, if there's something that he thinks he needs, he will, he will speak up about it. Do you believe he should have full independence? Oh, yeah. And he wouldn't be part of it if he wasn't going to get full independence. Thank you.